So in this video I'm going to show you how to set up battery from native instruments into Reaper and how you make it work with a MIDI controller and by following this guide you will only have to do this once and the next time you want to make music it be, it'll be ready by the click of a button. And there are chapters in the timeline of the video so if you're looking for a specific problem you can just go down there have a look and see if you find your answer. Now let's get to it, let's go to our computer and get started. Okay so here we have a new project in Reaper and let's just go ahead and insert a virtual instrument right click over here then insert virtual instrument and then you'll find battery double click that and when this option comes up build routing confirmation then you want to click yes the reason why is that you'll get let's just close that you'll get these tracks down here and you really want those tracks because later I'm going to show you the routing of battery and why you would want these tracks here Okay, so let's just open up battery and have a look. Okay, so the buttons that you see here are what they call cells and by right clicking on them you see that they call them cell. And you have some options here, you can change uh, cell color and add sample. But the easiest way to add a sample is just to drag and drop from this area over here. Now we're on kits and when you double click one of these then you get a pre-made uh, kit that you can play around with. So that's the easiest way to get started, but let's delete all of these. If you hold shift and click, then you choose all of them. Not sure if control A works. Control A works and then just press delete. Now. If you want to choose samples, then you obviously just click the samples. And as you see over here, you have also uh, like a tag system. So let's say we want drums and we want a kick. Uh, and then just click on the samples and they'll play. And then you can just use your uh, down and up arrow on your keyboard to find a kick that you like and then let's just add this one down here. Now it's added and the MIDI controller I'm going to use today and this works with any MIDI controller the way you choose what the button to press. Now th this is the lower left uh, as you see uh, where I have my mouse here and when I click this it doesn't play so all you have to do is go to the uh, MIDI cable symbol here and then I might have to press twice actually press once didn't work press twice now that works so that's how you choose uh, what key or uh, like the button you want to be using on your MIDI controller, just click this symbol right here. Okay, so if you want to use your own samples, if you've bought sample packs or found free sample packs, then just go to files. And then if you click all the way back, you'll get to my computer. Is that what it's called? At least you can see my drives here and then just find the location where you have saved your drum samples. So making a folder with all your drum samples organized is very smart. So I have mine here. And let's just go to this lo-fi sample pack. Then we have drum shots and we already have a kick. So let's find a snare. So let's just use this one, put it there. Then we can click this button and then choose. And now we have a four by four grid, you see with cells. Uh, and uh, this is four by four, so that's perfect for me. But if you want to add more uh, columns and when we started, there were a lot more, but it became a four by four when we uh, uh, use the Anali kit. So let's just, uh, then you just go to cell matrix here and then you have size and you can change the size. 
I'll go back to 4x4. So when you're building out a sample kit or whatever you want to call it from scratch, there is one problem that you're going to have and that's uh, hi-hats and uh, choking hi-hats. That means when you play a open hi-hat uh, and then you go to a closed one, then you want the open hi-hat sample to stop. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go to symbols, then hats closed. Let's just use this one. Assign it to the key. Uh, sorry, that's wrong. Then click this, then click there, and so now I have it. So it's working, and now let's find our closed, I mean our open hi-hat, hats open. Let's just use this one. Click it, then click there, and So now you can see the white line going across, playing the sample. Um, and when I play the closed hi-hat on a real drum kit, when you play the open hi-hat and then go to the closed, it would of course stop playing this sound. But when I play the open hi-hat now, and it doesn't stop. So this is how you fix that and make it choke. So just go to the setup and then since we already have loaded a kit, it's going to say uh, hi-hat and bass up here. If you haven't loaded a kit, it's just going to say untitled. That's okay. And when you click there, it's going to uh, get changed to voices one and then 10 millisecond fade. If you go back to the snare, you see that it says 32 and uh, fade 10. Now this is set to hi-hats. This is also a hi-hat and we we put that to the same group and then when you play the open hi-hat it then stops when you play uh, the closed hi-hat. So then That sounds a lot better. So that's how you set up a choke. Now, I have found a workaround if you want to choke a, a hi-hat to silence, because uh, sometimes drummer play a crash and then they uh, take it in their hand to choke it. So you wouldn't be playing another drum to choke it. I have tried to find a way to do this. I have found two ways that you can do it. The first way is it's easier to show you with show you with a longer sample, but um, the workaround that I found one of them is that you add. Uh, I made a sample called a choke, and it's basically just silence, and you can add the choke to hi hats, and then we have to assign a key. So now, that's one way to choke it to silence. The problem with this is that you would have to make, if you want a, uh, then you would have to make a choke for symbols as well. So you can hold control and then uh, drag and drop, and then you have to, and then you could make this untitled. You can click here to write a name, symbols. So that's one way of doing that. Uh, let's. I'll show you another way to make a sample stop when you press the button. So let's go back here and then loops. Let's have chord and then uh, go string. Let's add that over there. And by clicking it once, the uh, sample just plays. So if you want that to uh, be changed, then you go to main and then you 
click the volume envelope and then when you have this here it's controlled by uh, the hold and decay so if I click it now and I'm holding it in nothing happens just it plays like that so you can put a longer hold longer decay but if you want to play But if you want to play it by uh, holding down a key, then you would click the other option here. And then uh, when I hold it down, if I click it once, it plays like that. But if I hold it down, and then I drop it, then it stops playing. So then you just have to mess around with the sustain, the hold, release down here to make it um, fade the way you want and how long it should be playing after you stop holding down so that's one way you could do it you could take this and click here and uh, and let's see here oh, there. Then it would be hold. Okay, release. There you go, but that's another workaround, but I wouldn't say that's the best because if you want the hi-hat to ring out uh, while playing another groove, maybe you have some toms or something and you want the hi-hat to ring out because that's what the hi-hat would do on an acoustic set when you went to the toms. Uh, but those are the two ways that I found that you can choke uh, a drum. This sample, if you see that it says, it says 70 here, that means that it's 70 BPM. But if your song is faster or slower and you want to use this, then you would uh, click the engine. And then you have this stretch option. And when you click this, I don't believe you can set the BPM in um, in uh, on the samples somewhere in the plugin, so you would have to just uh, click on the metronome and then play, and then you would have to try to sync it up that way. Um, and if you want the if you wanted it to be uh, the sample lower. Uh, in pitch and stuff you can use this knob right here so if we it's lower and so here change the pitch and then you can change the speed over here okay so when it comes to the stuff down here i would just say just turn things on and play around with them um it's compressor a filter uh, so you can change compressor uh, the engine have some different sampler or stretch uh, velocity just play around with those and you'll quickly learn what they do now the only thing that it's is a little weird is that sense uh, so let's send a lot of reverb and delay now how this works is that when you change these you have to go to the master and you'll see your reverb and delay over here so if we change this to 16th so this affects the ascend from main and it goes to the master here so if you turn these off 
And this is where we get into the routing um, of battery, the sends or the reverb and delay send. If we go here, you can see that it triggers on the first track after battery. And the way you change those are is that you right click and then you have output, then you have master, you have buses, and you have direct out. So let's put the uh, closed hi hat on five, no, three and four. So now the hi hat would trigger here. But here's the problem, uh, and I haven't found a way to change this. This always sends to uh, the output one and two. So if you want to use the effects in a battery, I would say that you name this track uh, battery effects. So then you know that this is effect. But then let's say you play the kick and it's still registered here. You don't have the reverb and delay because you haven't sent any of that to the uh, reverb and delay over here. So I would go, let's say output and then direct down. That's going to be five and six. So you would say hi hat and then kick. Then you have the effects, but let's just turn those off. Use. Okay, so I guess you can change the effect place by changing the master. I haven't seen this option before, but let's say if we put it to 15 and 16 and we turn those on again and we play this. Yes. So you can change the effects and where they go with this. But let's just send it back to one and two. And then you have buses, if you want to use those, then if you want to send something to a bus, you can just uh, click the track and you can drop it. So let's put the snare on bus one. So you see it triggers on both the master and over here. And then, when you right click a bus, okay, you can't send the bus to its own track. But the reason why I have buses is that if we click on this, you'll see that the uh, color are some sort of teal. So these are uh, affecting the master track. But if we put on effects on this, you see they turn blue and we can put a, let's say saturation. And let's just go crazy so we can hear a difference. And this only affects this bus. But what I would do is that... Okay, so if you click down here, then you can actually change the... Then you can actually change the bus where it's sent. Now I'm just going to send this back to master and we're going to send this Send eight. And let's just turn the effects off. I don't want those. And instead of using the uh, battery buses, what I would recommend or what I will be doing is um, to actually use buses in Reaper. So you can just add Control T, a track, and you could, let's see it, it's there. Call this drum bus, and then you can send all. And then you would, uh, you might want to turn off the master send of these tracks because now they're going to be sent here. And you could do the same, you could add a
then click the open hi hat and the and send it to hi hats. And then you might want to change the turn this off. Because it's still playing from here, but you could add a let's say EQ. Okay, and then you will have to send this there. But then you don't want to send these there. So there's a ton of different ways that you can route stuff, but this is how I would do it. That means that you can put, if you want to do, you can put the effects that you absolutely love. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at the interface down here by itself. The main, we have looked at this, I would just say, play around with this, turn them on, see what happens. The same with the effects. Let's go to our snare and put on the lo-fi. <laughs> Play around like that, put on the compressor, EQ. And then you'll learn what these things do. And then we have the setup, then you have the voice groups. Uh, here you have changing of the MIDI channels for each drum, I guess. So when you change this to one, it doesn't change this, but I always have them at all channels. Uh, the articulation is quite interesting because let's say you, you can take this, there we go. And then you click the articulation on this one and we choose our button that's there. Now it's triggering, so you can play. And then you can also have other options. Let's, that was at the setup, so. The MIDI echo. And then you have a humanize option that you can play around with. Now the editor, just try to figure it out yourself. It isn't that complicated, but it can do a lot of things. But the best way to learn this thing is to just try out clicking the buttons. So what I would recommend you to do now is to just flesh out a kit. We have a kick here, we have a snare, closed and open hi-hat. Add whatever you usually use, like a clap, uh, some cymbal crashes. Sync it up by using the main button here. This to your MIDI controller the way you want it and then you can just save the kit. Let's go to file over here, save kit as, and then we can call it testing, save. Now let's just load a another kit. And now you see that when I press the lower left button, it's not loaded, it's triggering this, but if we go to open kit and we go to testing, the lower left is still triggering there. So if you make a just a standard kit, that will be your go-to kit, and then you can just start making a song with that, and then uh, you can get a beat going real quick, and afterwards you can change out the kick just by going to samples drums and a kick and then you can change this kick real easy but then you have a go-to kit so you can get quickly started and it's uh, already loaded up to your uh, the kit
keys or pads you want to use and when you have set everything up with the routing in Reaper the way you want it then I would say that you save uh, project template and then you save project template as I have one called beats that I'm working on and I'm setting this up to quickly open up to play beats I'll open up a new project tab and I'll show you the project template I use the most and that's this one I just called it standard setup and then you get everything loaded the way that you want. So to get started next time you just open up your project template and then you can already have your sample kit or the standard kit you made for battery uh, ready to go and you can just uh, easily drag and drop to change out the samples that you're using. And if you're having any problems then please leave a comment and I'll hopefully be able to help you. So if you want more music content like how to make music, how to write songs, how to set up stuff in your studio, then please subscribe. Thank you very much and goodbye.